had a guess I'd say he was in Zurich by now. Probably. We were supposed to be here two hours ago. The appointment was made for 11 o'clock. It is now one o'clock. 120 minutes, that's two hours. Ever considered a career in computers? Hello. Why are we late? My partner's brother's dog went missing. Bryce was the hero of the piece. I was the brains of the operation. I blocked off one end of the drain while brute strength and ignorance here chased her out. Two of them, actually. Moving is one. Must be 15 by now. She would be 15, wouldn't she, Liz? No, 14. <laughs> Gonna break the boy's heart in a couple of years, you mark my words. We got a photograph here of her somewhere. Liz, you got that photograph of Robin? Well, we got a photograph somewhere. And Robin's gone missing? No, uh, not really. We just lost touch with the family. I just presumed your granddaughter had gone missing. Uh, Robin's not my granddaughter. She's Liz's. Oh, oh here we go. Is this recent? No, that's the trouble. Liz hasn't clapped eyes on her for two years. Uh, Michael, that's uh, Liz's son, uh, Robert's father, he hasn't kept in touch all that much. Are there any addresses we could try? Uh, not really. Uh... Well, Liz has kept a couple of letters, haven't you, Liz? I'll get them. No, don't worry about it now. We will find them later. Go on, boys. Now, you just lie back there and keep your eyes off that pretty little nursing aid. <laughs> He's had a, a tough trot, Liz. He lost his good boy in career. Michael, he's no good at all. Bad debts, broken marriages, in and out of courts. Liz is very anxious that Robin gets a decent start. We'll do what we can. I think he's only holding out for news. Then I wouldn't be at all surprised if he gave it away altogether. Ah. Hey, George. How's the bladder? Make it brief, Ken. I'm hardly likely to spend the afternoon batting the breeze with my ex-wife and a future husband, am I? If I get any change out of good day, how are you? I'll send up a flare. Yes, yeah, so we'll be quick about it. I want to push ahead. I don't like the look of our client. And I don't want him carking it before we've collected. You ever thought of taking up a career in social work, have you, Bryce? Don't be silly, Ken. It's on Saturday the 16th at St Agnes in Milton. Right. You'll be getting an invitation in due course, Ken, which will have all this information on it. Yes, I was just making sure that he got it early. Oh, yes, we're in the grants on that, my poppet. I just don't want Ken to think that he won't be getting formal notification when the time comes. After the service, we'll be relaxing with a selection of family and friends in the executive mezzanine at the Civic Centre in Progress Road. Sounds great. If you don't want to come, it doesn't matter. Oh, it'd be really marvellous if you could come, Ken. Actually, I think Bryce and I are in Sydney on the 16th. Oh, Pat said you'd definitely be here. Did she? Pat say that? I think Tracy would enjoy it immeasurably if you could come, Ken. She doesn't broadcast her emotions, but I think it'd really make her day. Yeah, she'd love it, Ken. OK. Yeah, that'd be good. I'd love to come. The cold, hard professional is a compelling spectacle throughout the animal kingdom. Its prey never has a chance from the moment it's spotted. It's pitiful, really. Yes? I wonder if you could help me with an inquiry. Have you seen this lass anywhere around here at any stage in the past two years? I don't think so. Please be sure. That photo was taken some time ago. She's probably a bit older. No, I... Look, this is Michael. A girl's life is at stake here. Have you seen anyone who looks even remotely like her? 
Yes. You see? When you think, you! Ah. Sorry, this is a passport photo. We do a lot of international work. Look, I must ask you not to tell anyone you've seen this. It's imperative that no one knows what I look like. Okay. And no one knows what I'm doing. Yes, I can see that. Absolutely sure about these party lights, Trish. Well, we do brighten the place up a bit. Yes, but it's a buck's turn, darling, and some of the lads will be getting a bit festive in the latter stages. Well, it's just a bit of colour, Bob. Yes, I know. Yes, it's a lovely thought, too. Look, I'll tell you what, leave them for now, and if some of the blokes do get a bit silly, well, I can just grab a chair and pull them down. Have you asked Derek yet? No, I haven't. I've been, um, I've been thinking about that. Well, you better ask him the wedding's next week. Yes. Look, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I've been mulling this over and I've decided. Do you know who I'd really like to be my best man? Yes. Ken. Oh, no, Bob. Please ask Derek. I'll ask Derek. Now, Sandy, I've thought this over long and hard. I have a very high regard for Ken. And I know it's strange, but we've developed a sort of camaraderie and a mutual respect that I think is a credit to both of us. Pat, you might as well check the electoral office, see if Michael Barnard's still registered in this state. Let's move it out, Kent. Do you mind if I at least get the jack out first? I take it from this that you haven't uncovered anything yet. Rome wasn't built in the first five minutes, Kent. I wonder if it's worthwhile retracing my steps. Why is that? Just hurry up. Pat, we'll meet you outside the florist shop at Darlington Street at 3 o'clock. Yeah, OK. Ken? Yep? I'm going to be having lunch with Sandy today. Is there anything you want me to say? You're joking? No. What is going on here? Excuse me, have you ever seen this girl before? No, sorry. Excuse me, Pat, have you ever seen that girl before? No, sorry, mate. I'm sorry, I don't know her. Please, I want you to be absolutely 100% certain in your own mind. Now, a girl's life is at risk here. We're playing for very high stakes. Look, this is ridiculous. I do not know the girl. I have never seen her before. Uh, now you say that, but can you be sure? Look, I'm trained to probe. I have to be. It's a business and I'm a professional. It doesn't do you justice. Yeah, I know the girl. Knew her old man better. A mate? Last bloke that said that got his nose broken in three places. Once on the front of his face, twice. It's come out the back of his head. Yeah, right, I'm with you. Actually, my ten mates and I are looking for him. We've got a score to settle, too. Good. He's scum. And gutless. Cleared off owing half the neighbourhood money. Might try McGinty down at the TAB. He was knocking off Bernard's missus. Nice. Thanks very much. Mate. There you are. We were supposed to meet at the flower shop. I've been looking for you for over an hour. We've been here all the time. Bob wants to see you. I can't possibly go. Bryce has got to leave. No, I can handle it if you want to get away. For the first time in his life, Bryce picks now to be reasonable. This has got to stop. Bloody conspiracy. What's the matter with him? Sandy's getting married. Again? Who's the poor bastard this time? I can say to you quite truthfully, Ken, I'd be a very proud man indeed to have you with me at my right-hand side in these proceedings. Yeah, but it's of just... Of course, Ken, I know it's very difficult for you. A great part of your life was shared with Sandy and vice versa, come to think of it. A bond was forged and I don't expect or want any of that affection to vanish. Yeah, well, I can appreciate that. 
In a strange way, Ken, it's that very bond that makes it appropriate that you be my best man. Pat apparently thought so too, mate. Yes, that doesn't surprise me. Ken, it would make it a very special day. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, while I think of it, Bob, do you sell turpentine in bulk? Barnard apparently fled off to Perth a year or so ago and no one's seen him since. Robin stayed with her mother, who's since remarried, lives around here somewhere. How did you find out? Boy called McNabb runs a bedding shop. Had a bit of a liaison with the brat's mother after Barnard lost interest. How do you know that? Oh, street talk. Let's see, you can read the mind after a while. You mean taking tablets or something? Hello. Wonder if you could help us. What do you want? We're looking for a girl called Robin Barnard. Your daughter? Never heard of her. Who are you two anyway? I'm Bryce. This is Ken. We're from the Excelsior Research Foundation. I don't care who you're from. I don't know what you're talking about. We're talking about your daughter. I'm calling the police. All right, all right. We'll go. Well, that seemed to go pretty well. This, uh, this Robin girl, is she all right, is she? Look, who sent you? The girl's grandfather hired us. Oh, Les. Oh, yeah, he's a nice bloke, Les, but his son didn't turn out the same. I haven't seen Robin for about six months. The father and me split up a while back and I got married again. We understood that she was staying with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, she did for a while. But I gave the money so she could go back to her father in Perth. Did she go back to Perth? No, no, I wouldn't think so. She couldn't stand Michael. He's a vicious bastard. And you just let her go? Well, look, she's not my daughter anyway. She's from Michael's first and I got my own life to lead. All right, thanks a lot. That's OK. okay. See you later. Bye-bye. Not much luck, I'm afraid. The poor kid had a rough trot at school as well. None of that lot seems to have kept in touch with her. Did she go to Perth? I don't think so. One of the girls has just said she saw her in St Kilda a month or so ago. Doesn't sound too hopeful. Time to uh, call in a few favours. Who owes us a favour? We might split forces here, I think, Pat. Bryce, who owes us a favour? Trust me. You two are actually telling me that you require my assistance. We felt we needed more backup on this one, nothing more. I see. Look, it was too much trouble, didn't it? No, not at all, Ken. Not at all. No, the force hasn't got much on at present. Uh, five people are looking for some real work. What's the problem? Your greyhound gone missing, is it? We were wondering if you knew anything about this girl. She looks a lot like you. Oh, sorry. I meant this girl. Any whispers? Whispers? Not that I can recall, no. The girl's gone missing. How long? We don't know. Your parents? Grandfather hired us. Good God. Yes, the parents split up and the girl went into limbo. Hasn't been seen since. Now, our friend saw her in St Kilda about a month ago. Uh, she wouldn't be the first. What's her name? Robin Barnard. Well, I'll give us the photo and I'll get a copy of it and put it out. It wouldn't hold your breath. Thousands of them out there. No, your face is fairly well known to the force. And very highly regarded. Will she run away? Could be. Her name's uh, Robin Barnard. Well, she wouldn't use her own name. Have you got a photo? 
Uh, I have a photocopy of a photocopy of a photo, if that's any other. <laughs> what happened here? Did the kids riot or something? No, not exactly. We had two TV crews both making docos about street kids arrive at the same time. You're kidding. Damien? Do you know her? Yeah, what do I know? Just another face. They all blend together after a while. He likes to say things like that. He thinks it makes a good impression. for band practice. Yes, I suppose I will. Look, what if Ken calls while I'm out? Bob, Ken won't call. I was married to him for seven years. Derek will be at band practice. Ask him. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to propose a toast to Bob, a man who I've only met on five previous occasions, none of them interesting, and Sandy, his wife, previously known as my wife. I hope we'll all be very happy together. Are you sure about this, Pat? No, I'm not sure. I'm just telling you what the guy at the refuge centre told me. The kid's name is Flynn. He's a local identity around here. Knows everybody in the area. Apparently he's part of a gang that squats in there. I'm not happy about this, Pat. Dealing with some psychopathic brat from a broken home. He's just as liable to come at us with a gun. Or an axe. He's probably on drugs. He probably murdered his own parents in the first place. Perhaps he'd like to be Bob's best man. <laughs> Can't see anyone. We need a torch. Yes, well, they can't be here, can they? Great idea leaving the torch behind. Hello there. Oh, None of you guys is in the scouts, eh? Okay, knock it off. Bring him to the office. G'day, boys. Come on in. Look, Ken, Bruce, I'm a businessman, and I've got a eyes in a number of fires at the moment. I'll be glad to help, but it'll cost. Fair enough. How does a couple of dollars and a pizza thrown in sound? I think that's a bit cheap. You're quite right. I was just trying one on. What about five dollars and a cat lunch? Well, uh, I was thinking of um, 40% of your fee, which would be about uh, 120 bucks a day. That makes it uh, 48 bucks. Let's say 50 a day, and uh, we'll absorb around costs. Sorry, I couldn't possibly consider that. Ten dollars is our final offer. I'm running a company here. Oh, well, thanks very much, and good luck. I don't like your chances, eh? Finding people in this neighbourhood's a bit hard. You're hired. Ken? Here's two bucks. Go and get yourself a candle lunch while I talk to the only genuine lead we've got. Look, uh, I'm sorry about the reception. The gang gets a bit towed sometimes. Do they all live in there? Oh, most of them. Some stay at refuges. It changes. Some go back home. Oh, g'day. See you tomorrow. Yeah, in the supermarket, right? Nice meeting you. Now, ladies, if you would gather round, and any gentlemen shoppers we have here today, I'd like you to sample our wonderful gourmet selection. Uh, now, if these girls and boys would please move away, I'd like you to try the duck liver pate with cognac and peppercorn. Duck what? Liver. What's uh, liver? I'd like you to try it's our northern. wonderful range of gourmet pate. What's the northern? I think you'll find it has a very piquant flavour. Yeah, well, I'll need salt. Would you kids move on? I've asked you once. There are adults here. Now, this comes in a 400 gram plastic bucket, which I think you'll find very useful. There is a full range, and the price is right. That's enough. I've had enough. I'm going to call the manager. Face off, dog turd, anyway. Nah, we only come here on tasting days. Not bad stuff in the gourmet section. 
Hey, listen, Mouse. Yeah? You and the others go and set the stall. Yeah. Shark and I will help out Bruce, right? Radio. It's Bryce, actually. Now, have you found her? Well, I'm not a bloody magician, mate. We've only been at it for a day. I've got a lead, Dave. You got your car? Yeah, it's over there. Terrific. You can drop us into a couple of places along the way. I suppose I could. Bryce, eh? You're a bloke with a ferret called Bryce. Are you in a ferret, sir? Eh? Not really, no. Pity. I know where I can lay my hands on a couple. Bloody cheap, too. Tell me about this kid, Flynn. Don't know anything about him. He turned up here about eight months ago. I don't know where from. He tells everybody he's a businessman. <laughs> yeah, he seems very bright. Oh, no, very. A lot of the other kids hate him, of course. He only gets by on his wits. If he makes a mistake, the knives will be out. He's a strange kid. I hope he's okay. Why wouldn't he be? It's the quick and the dead around here. This is the third place we've stopped at already. What's he doing? Business. What business? Oh, he runs bids for a bloke. Jesus. I'm a chauffeur for an SP boogie. Oh, he does other things as well. I don't want to know. Okay, boys. Let's go. Let's go. I've seen kids with track marks the size of tennis balls up and down their arms and legs. Kids with gangrene. 12-year-old boys selling themselves on the streets. It's felt kid. And the parents don't give a stuff. I've seen 13-year-olds with ulcerated... Do you mind if I use your phone? Sure. 13-year-olds, mate, with ulcerated legs. I've seen kids sticking needles into their eyeballs because every other vein in their body's collapsed from overuse. I've seen 10-year-olds with knife members of their own family because they're strung out, like they're hanging out. I don't know when you've ever seen a heroin withdrawal. Ah, uh, yeah, Bob, I don't know when you've seen a heroin withdrawal. No, I've been out. Scratching in the gun. Hey, I'm ringing from an apex club in St Kilda. That was Ken. Who did he want? He wanted in. He said he'd thought about it and he wanted to be my best man. Well, Derek's doing it now. Yeah, I told Ken that. He was obviously disappointed. I think we both were. <laughs> Whoa! You both out! You both out! You right? Oh, sorry, Damien. You were talking about leg ulcers, wasn't it? He's not running bets in there, is he? No. Well, what's he doing? Don't know. Might be going in another competition. He's always going in competitions. Won a toaster one time and a digital watch. I'm not running a taxi service, Flynn. Well, she's not in there. Only one will stop. What's all that stuff? Entry forms. Say so why you want to go to London in 17 words or less than win a car. Good God. I thought you were smart, Flynn. You'll never get a real car that way, boy. When are you going to get a real car, boss? Would you like to come inside for a banana daiquiri? No, thanks. I'm fashionably late as it is. Take very good care of it, please. Don't get too drunk. I'm going to Bob's Bucks party. I'm more likely to fall asleep. <laughs> is Bob really having a Bucks turn? Yeah. Someone from Apex is going to jump out of a cape. <laughs> I've got an appointment. Just wait here. That's hell. G'day, Digger. Great pen, eh? She's not here, mate. She moved down a month or so ago. She's living with a bloke called Snake. Drugs. They're all on drugs around here. 
Silly little snake. Oh, Jesus. Don't you like snake? He's an animal. Carl Jung spoke of a need for ritual. In many cultures, this need has been expressed in elaborate and very beautiful ways. The paradigm case would be the high church in Renaissance Italy, or this sort of thing in Australia. Do you remember of Apex, are you? No, but I've got my name down in case one of you blokes dies. Oh, good. You blokes want to play Shagger Bucket? Yeah, I'll be in that. Who is the Shagger Bucket? Shake the bucket. Who cares? You head back and I'll see you in there. Yeah, okay, see ya. Where's he going? Oh, back to the squat. He doesn't like Snake much. Snake tried to kill him. Why? Oh, Snake's got a few personal problems. You stay here. No, 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 no. I'll go with him. Flint. You've got the hots for little Robin. Well, you should be right, mate. She charges 30 bucks. You know, you might get a rate. Underage, half price. Who's your friend, Flinny? Bryce, how do you do? I do well, Brycey. Very well. Thank you for your concern. Um, he wants to talk to Robin. Her grandfather's looking for her. I shall do it for anyone, mate, if the old bloke's up to it. Where is she? Not here, Flinny. She gave me the clap, so I gave her the flick in the interest of personal hygiene. Thanks. No more questions? Nice voice. Oi, Flinny. We don't like snoopers. Tell Captain Courageous. If I see him around here again, I'll blow him away. He's crazy. Ah, uh, don't worry. He's like that to everyone. Does he mean it? I mean, sometimes. Ken, isn't it? It is, yeah. Derek, mate, on Ken. I'm Bob's best man. Oh, yeah. And as such, certain duties devolve to me with regard to giving Bob a decent send-off. <laughs> At the moment, we're collecting a few Bob to get him a bit of a surprise. It's five bucks a head if you'd like to contribute. It's a surprise. <laughs> we're going to get him a stripper message. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's 120 bucks, you know. And, and you ring up and tell them the message you want and they come around and they deliver it to whoever you want it sent to. In this case, Bob. In this case, Bob. Isn't it a bit embarrassing for the poor old bastard? It'll be the biggest laugh you've ever had in your life, son. Be it wrought, mate. 100% cast iron wrought. <laughs> but he'll hate it. He'll absolutely hate he'll it. He'll probably crap himself. He will. He'll crap himself. <laughs> but is that good? I mean, should we make Bob crap himself? Why don't we just let him have a good time? It's probably the last time he'll ever have any decent fun. The guy goes into a forest and he shoots a deer. And he throws it over his shoulder and he starts walking out. And a Range Rover pulls up behind him, and the park ranger gets up. Book him upstairs, will you? And the park ranger gets out and says, hey, you. Upstairs, I said. He says, are you, are you aware that this is a national park? And the guy says, yeah, of course. And where are the Top shelf, I think. He says, well, are you aware, are you aware that the animals in this park are protected? And the bloke says, yeah, of course. Now, you need an eye test, son. The guy says, are you aware that the animals in this park are protected? He says, yeah, of yes, course. Yes, he is. So he says, you certainly can. It's for you. Blair, he'll put him on. He says, well, are you aware that deer in particular are protected? Oh, good day, Alan. Yeah, yeah, a bit pushed. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, Robin, someone or other. Uh, Robin Barnard. Yeah? Oh, crikey. Okay. Cheers. Anyway, he says, are you aware that deer in particular are protected? I know I look drunk, but I'm not. I can smell you from here. You shouldn't have driven the car. 
I'm not drunk. Ah. I'm not. You're not going to have my car again. I didn't drive your car. How did you get here? Bob's car. Oh, what's that? Oh, somebody spilled beer on my coat. Was it the same somebody who vomited on your shoe? No, that was somebody else. You're a fool, Ken. Pat, these are for you. You're a very wonderful woman, Pat. I think you're extremely wonderful, and I want you to marry me. You'd better come inside. Only if you're extremely sure. Take your coat off and your shoes. Ken, where are your trousers? Please come home. I had deliver around here. God, what a night. Look, can I go home now or are we here for a reason? Don't worry, we'll find her. Not around here, surely. A bit hard to say. How old are you, Flynn? 32. Yeah, I'm 32, mind you. You enjoy living around here? Would you? They burn old railway characters around here. If you scrounge around, you can sometimes find old brass fittings. They're bloody good sellers. Would you be able to give us a lift down the markets? Saturday is a big day. Your parents still alive, Flynn? Uh, I don't know. Fantastic. Hang on. Fifty or sixty bucks for them. Oh, hello. What are you doing here? I've been looking for your blokes all over town. So they have homes. Come in. I didn't realise you two were an item. We're not. He uh, just drops by occasionally to hose down his shoes. All right. G'day. G'day. Look, I think we've located your girl. Where is she? Well, if it is her, she's dead. Body's been at the morgue for two weeks. No ID until someone spotted your photo. Oh, bugger it. Central want a positive identification. Do you know where the mother is? Yeah, hang on. I'll come with you. Slightly more formal frock might be appropriate. I'll keep in touch. Hang on, I'll pay you. I'll fix me up when we find her. You sure? No worries. Hey, if you want this luggage jack, I can give to you a cost. Get out of it. Dressed and dishevelled you are. There's always someone more badly dressed and dishevelled than yourself. I've just been with Blair. Robin Barnard's dead. What happened? Don't know. Didn't go into it. Not much point. You told the old bloke yet? No, I just found out myself. I've got to go to this wedding. You better drop me off. Do you want me to come with you? No. No, you go to the wedding.
Took a turn last week. I don't fancy his chances. Bloody hell. Did you find Robin? She's uh, dead, I'm afraid. Dead? Dear me. How? I don't know. An accident, I suppose. <sighs> Poor Liz. Ladies and gentlemen, finish us, finish us, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not very accustomed to making speeches. Selling insurance, yes. Making speeches, no. But when Bob asked me to get up and say a few words at his wedding, I said I'd be glad to. Bob is a friend I value greatly. We struck up an immediate rapport, Bob and I, we met through charity work, which is so very typical of Bob, as anyone who knows him will attest. Yeah. Bob is a selfless person, passionately concerned with the welfare of others, and prepared to put any amount of work into projects in the community, be they a playground for disadvantaged children, or bus rides for the old folk up at the Emily Ferguson. As I look about me here today, I see many people to who Bob has extended the warm hand of kindness at some stage or another. I can't think of a more generous person than Bob, and I think it's that patient, caring, generosity of spirit that strikes everyone about him. And yet, you know, I'd like to point out that the guy is not a saint, very far from it. Bob had a bit of a buck turn the other night. And Bob more than held his own with some of the bigger rascals about the place. He's a man's man, Bob. Let's be quite clear about that. I've been on a number of working bees with Bob. And a camaraderie builds up in that situation. That, I think, is very important. As to Bob's bride, what can I say? I think most of us here know Sandy. We've watched her come into our community. We've shared her joys and sorrows, and we've come to love her. None more so than Bob, I might say. I was thinking about this the other night, and I think I'm right in saying, Bob fell in love with Sandy the first time he ever saw her. She must have come into his shop one day, probably a Friday, because I can remember it was on the Saturday and we were running the disabled train rides, and all Bob could talk about was this girl, Sandy. I can reveal to you now, Bob, that there was a time when there were quite a few of us wished you'd shut up about her. <laughs> of course, once we'd met her, we could see his point, and gradually, with the passage of time, they went on to become a fixture. Uh, I find it hard to remember a time now when Bob and Sandy weren't around. Uh, just on that point, I'd like to make particular mention of someone very special here today, one of my favourite people. And I know one of Bob and Sandy's. And I refer here, of course, to Tracy. Tracy, you've got a marvellous mother, darling, and a very devoted friend in Bob. Incidentally, anyone who wants to have a bit of a dance with Tracy later on will have to queue up behind me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would ask you to charge your glasses and get up standing to drink a toast to two of the luckiest people alive. 
Bob and Sandy. Bob and Sandy. He's a witty bloke, Derek, isn't he? One of the most sensitive water buffalo in captivity, they reckon. <laughs> First. First. Hey, you remember young Bryce, don't you? Les. Don't get up. Did you find Robin? Yes. How is she? Good. She's good. Is she still a charmer? Yes. She sends a love. Did she? Do you hear that, Lance? Yes, Les. Now you just rest up and lie back. Don't forget we're, we're playing tennis tomorrow. Ken, Mike, Bob, Pat. Are you enjoying yourselves? Very much, Bob. It's just lovely. Yes, yeah, great, Bob. You look great. So do you, Pat. Thank you. <laughs> Have you had a dance yet? No, I haven't. Well, you should have a dance with uh, Tracy. I um, oh, will, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure she'd love to have a dance with you. Yes, I will. And uh, at the risk of offending Sandy Pat, I wonder if I might squire you round the park tree for a short period. I'd love to. Oh, good. <laughs> Christ, if I turned up with a model aeroplane, you'd want to borrow that as well. I think that went pretty well. Most enjoyable, yeah. It was fine, Bob. It's a shame about the music. No, it was lovely. I thought the catering could have been a bit better. No, it was true. You don't think the Frankfurters were a bit stale? Bob, it was fine. <laughs> Are they gorgeous? Bob's taking us on a play. Good for him. To Fiji. Will you be good, OK? See ya. <clears throat> So, you're a married woman again, eh? You never learned, do you? Seems that way. Good luck. All of us are beautiful, in Fiji, Pat. Bob. Sun only shown its happy face for one hour on our first day, apparently. <laughs> Poor Sandy and Bob. Mm. Still, Bob managed to get sunstroke in that one hour. Give it to me. Oh, God, he did too. Poor Bob. Oh, that's nice. They bought us something. Does he think we're a couple? Aren't we? Not even if it would help the balance of trade, Ken. There are two of us. What's he bought? A seashell table. Mmm. Pat, I'd like very much for you to have that. You're so generous, Kim. Kind of guy, and don't worry, customs probably won't let it in anyway. Yeah, Bob wonders that. <laughs> Where's Bryce? I thought he'd be back by now. Paying Flynn, the money finally came through. What else does Bob say? Oh, not much. He hopes the weather down here is treating us all kindly and it's not too cold and miserable. Very sincerely, your friend Bob. Perhaps customs won't let Bob back in. No, I haven't seen him for a couple of weeks. You're with Pat, aren't you? Yes, that's right. It's just the money's come through for that job he helped us with, and I want to make sure he gets it. Do you know where I can find him? No, I don't. Gang war. Stabbings. What? Had a few crawling here. Leave off, will you? Snakes more was up. Oh, jeez. Look, that doesn't necessarily mean...
Hey, where's Flinny? He's gone. Jesus. I've got to keep down the market. It's not the same anymore. When did he, uh... A couple of days ago. He'd be in London by now. London? Yeah. What are you talking about? That competition for the car. He won. He won a car that can drive to London? No, nah, second prize. Round trip to London. First class, 2,000 spend. <laughs> He'd be there now, wouldn't he? What? He'd be there now. Yeah, he probably would. I'll tell you what, I'll shout you a cup of coffee. Yeah, OK. Hey, mine the stuff, will ya? Hey, you don't have to shout for and give me 500 bucks. OK, you can shout me. Yeah, he left an itemised account of what you owe him. 10% off tradesman's discount. Oh, yeah. He also sent you a postcard from Singapore. Really? Well, for a little bastard, didn't he? <laughs> That was the final episode of The Fast Lane. Coming up shortly on ABC after the mid-evening news, a heartwarming documentary on Mother Teresa.